Have you been looking for a relationship after a long time being single? True enough, looking for a lifelong partner is not easy, and it takes a lot of time and effort to know someone really well. But because of your past relationships, you now have a greater understanding of who you are and what you want. Life is about relationships, no matter what age you are. Listen to this episode of True Love Knots with Maria Romano as she talks with Cynthia Harris about finding love in the middle of the pandemic and the later stages of life, building relationships and trust, and showing up as who you are. Cynthia also talks about her classical background and desire to be more in the entertainment industry, where she plays the piano for wedding ceremonies. Hi, everybody. Maria Romano here, True Love Knots. Let me tell you, first of all, I have a treat today. So for those of you that are going to also be watching this on YouTube, oh my gosh, my guest is a classical pianist and she does beautiful, plays beautiful music. She's here in Las Vegas. Her name is Cynthia Harris. And she has a beautiful, unique business where she provides music for those in the event industry, but live music. And, you know, you think about the art, right? The art of what happens today and what really makes an event, not that canned music isn't great. Please don't misunderstand me. I love listening, you know, to definitely certain artists. But when you walk into a room and you you see a harpist or you see a violinist or a guitarist or a piano player, it just elevates the event. And I know um, Cynthia also, she is involved with the E-Women's Network, which we have. So welcome, Cynthia. You kudos. Air kisses, and I put on my best perfume for you. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much, Maria. Thanks for having me on. It's going to be really fun. So, and th thank you for those lovely words, lovely, kind words you said about live music. <laughs> so, tell us a little bit how you got started. What, who is Cynthia Harrison, and a little bit about you and your company. All right, so the company comes a little bit later, um, but in the beginning, uh, as a little girl and growing up in Tupelo, Mississippi, I was Cindy Harris, and Cindy Harris played her first wedding at the age of 11. I was in the fifth grade and I played my first wedding. So it was it was really awesome. I took organ lessons for a whole year uh, in order to get ready. And I played the real Here Comes the Bride, not a simplification, and the real um, the recessional music by uh, Mendelssohn. Anyway, so that started. That started it all. And uh, a little bit later, as I became uh, a young adult, um, I started playing my girlfriend's weddings and family members' weddings, et cetera. So it's just gone on from there. Um, but as far as um, classical entertainment goes, um, you know, it was right after my son graduated from high school and I was an empty nester um, and, and, and deeply um, uh, grieving on a daily basis. <laughs> um, and I just wanted to get more involved in the live music scene here in the incredible um, neon mecca of Las Vegas. Um, so I started uh, classical entertainment because I have a classical background, um, but I wanted to move towards the entertainment side because uh, we have such great great stuff here in Las Vegas. Um, and all of my, or, or many of my friends and colleagues, we all had classical, um, uh, actually that's that's um, uh, that's not in the past tense, that's regular. We all have classical backgrounds. So we're capable of playing, um, you know, the classical side of music and how that relates to weddings, of course, is mostly the ceremony music. Um, but then because we're in Las Vegas and we, you know, you learn how to make a living wherever you are, we all have become crossover artists. So not only do we have the classical background and repertoire, but we do a lot of uh, contemporary things as well. So, uh, and that's perfect for the wedding industry here in Las Vegas because we have so much that um, so many couples that want the traditional or that want the real contemporary or that want to mix. So we do all that in classical entertainment. 
Well, you know, I think it's interesting because you said that you have to cross over between classical and contemporary, but I just don't think of what you do and your company I, it's for any event because we have, we have large conventions here. So we have people have other events besides, you know, wedding. Are you seeing a trend besides wedding ceremonies? Have you had more people reach out to you that are maybe doing corporate or having maybe a birthday bash? Could you share a little bit about that? Absolutely. Um, in my company, I tend to specialize in uh, what we call ambiance music. In other words, background music that's uh, perfect for the corporate events, for the networking parties. A lot of times when these uh, companies come to Las Vegas, they'll have an opening networking event and people want to talk and they're 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 pushing deals. They're they're doing business. So they want a different type of um, music. They want background music. They want ambiance, as opposed to say like a show where you're going to be entertained and you have um, a lot of production. You have singing. You have dancing. Costumes, lights. That's a different um, a different type of uh, entertainment that that goes on in Las Vegas. What classical entertainment caters to, again, like I said, is more of uh, like the ambience. So we're perfect in the wedding ceremony, we're perfect in the cocktail hour, but when you, when uh, with the uh, um, uh, receptions and everything, well, many times you want more of the entertainment flavor. And, and I will plug, I will plug for the DJ. Um, the DJs are so perfect because they are brilliant at being an MC and taking care of all the timing. I mean, um, th those of us that work in the wedding industry, we understand what a timeline is and we know how to work within that. But a lot of times our, our guests, um, our couples, um, they're not aware of that and they have no idea that that MC, that DJ is really controlling all of that. And it's a very necessary part of the wedding um, uh, of the wedding event. So anyway, um, uh, classical entertainment kind of focuses on the uh, the ambiance side and it's great for corporate. Um, it's great for galas. It's great for um, the social soirees. It's great for backyard barbecues, uh, just all types of all types of events. So you mentioned let's backtrack for a moment. You grew up in Mississippi. Oregon, that means, or you, if you played on the Oregon church. Absolutely. Yeah, of course you had to, right? <laughs> That's where yeah, you learned um, the organ. In, in junior high, I was the Sunday evening organist for our little church. And then by the time I was 16, I was um, the organist slash choir director. Doesn't mean I really knew what I was doing, <laughs> but but uh, they needed someone to fill the position. So I was organist and pianist um, full time at a little church. Um, yeah. And it's, I, I, even today, I'm still a church pianist. So it sounds like your passion turned into really your career, which is something you love to do. That's what it sounds like. So do you play any other instruments? Well, just all the keyboard instruments. So, which basically is the, the piano um, and the organ, but also the harpsichord. Um, I love, now the harpsichord is, um, like I said, the predecessor of the piano right. and the harpsichord um let's see the heyday of the harpsichord is is like during queen elizabeth the first time she was actually a harpsichordist and henry the eighth also played um played music now the song green sleeves um one of our lovely little christmas songs has been attributed to henry the eighth um, but it hasn't really been absolutely proven but anyway yeah so um I, I love the harpsichord, the music that was prevalent during the Baroque era, which is uh, 1600 to 1750 for those who are um, music history buffs or art history buffs. Uh, that time period, that was when the harpsichord was the instrument of the day. Yes, it's a very opulent period as well. Could you play a few chords just for a moment? Anything you want to do, something that whatever you think in the afternoon, I mean, whatever. Give us a minute of, of hearing some beautiful, beautiful piano music. All right, I'll tell you about this in just a second. <laughs> 
That is my favorite uh, entrance of the Bride March. It is attributed to Jeremiah Clark. It's called Trumpet Tune uh, because it's frequently played, the melody is played uh, on a trumpet um, and uh, it would uh, uh, traditionally be trumpet and organ. Uh, and it's just such a beautiful, beautiful piece of music. And this is written in the Baroque period. Um, I'm drawing a blank on his dates, but this would probably be uh, around 1700 or so. Um, and it's just a very lovely, stately, elegant march. Um, so, um, oh, oh, okay, hold on. All right, um, bing. Um, the, the actual, um, uh, the actual title of this tune is, uh, it was the entrance of the Prince of Denmark. Now the Prince of Denmark was um, the, um, the, um, the queen, oh, I forget which queen um, of England, and it was her husband, just like um, our late Queen Elizabeth II, the, the Prince Philip, was just a prince. He wasn't the king. Right. All right. So the prince of Denmark was the husband of whichever queen it was. So this music was, was their song. Uh -huh. It was the song. It was the the um uh, the entrance of the prince of like hell to the chief. <laughs> exactly right. Like hell to the chief. So tell me a little bit. Let's backtrack a little bit. Let's talk about. Let's talk about you finding love again. You know, I talk about not just the love of music. Let's talk a little bit about you, your hubby. You got married, I think, two years ago, April 1st. Actually, we just celebrated our first anniversary. First anniversary. Okay. Right. So tell us a little bit about how you met. Okay. Because I think you said you met online. No, no. We oh, did you didn't meet online? Okay. Online. Maybe I just. Okay. So. How did you meet? <laughs> There is a very, there's a long story and all of these little uh, incremental signs, you know how us ladies, um, we uh, uh, watch for the signs. Um, and uh, I had been um, single for 15 years and always, uh, you know, always looking because <laughs> um, I knew I certainly wanted to be in a um, in a love relationship because I strongly believe in love. Well, anyway, so um, this was right in the middle, just right in the middle um, of the pandemic. So um, my girlfriend of many, many years was having a party on Christmas Day. And this was in 2020. So we were still in the midst of lockdown but um, she was having a small party and I had played a church service that morning. I had had Christmas day with my family and I just did not feel like going to a Christmas party. And she texted me and she said, I've got bachelors coming. And so I was like, okay, I'll go. And that's where I'm at. Oh, how I interesting. I knew because of the signs. Um, now, one of the signs was I had um, previous, uh, prior to COVID, I had been planning on doing some traveling and I had been checking into, um, I had found that Portugal was the place where I wanted to spend some time. I wanted to do um, some video blogs uh, of the, the music scene there um, in Lisbon and in Portugal. Um, and I had even uh, connected with some expats there to find out would I be able to stay here a while? Would I be able to make a living? Anyway, so um, I was on my way. And then um, when the pandemic hit and traffic or travel was squashed, um, okay, that took care of that. So I didn't get to go on my trip. I didn't get to go to Portugal. Well, so I go to this Christmas party on Christmas day of 2020 and I meet this wonderful guy from Portugal. Oh my, <laughs> I didn't realize that, okay. Yes. Interesting. Okay. Now, so that was sign number one. One. What was so the now, other sign? <laughs> sign number two. Um, for many, many years, um, I wear big hats because the, uh, just because the sun does oh. things to our skin. We. So, I know that. I'm a big hat lady. Well, um, so when, when I met um, my husband-to-be uh, and he gave me his business card, um, he's an artist. So when I went home that evening, I went and looked on his, um, 
his website and up comes the first painting that came up was this lady in a wide brim hat. Sign number two. <laughs> number two. And, you know, it was just, it, we're, we're both um, not exactly spring chickens. <laughs> we, you know, uh, and when you find love um, in the later stages of life, uh, I don't know, there was just, it was just like a direct hit. Um, it was just wonderful. So, yeah, I'm very happy. <laughs> so, you know, and you said that it's true because it's later on in life and you, you say you're not spring chickens, but really it's not a question of being young. It's a question of just even your seasoned, you've enjoyed life and you know what you want. And, uh, you know, which we see, listen, how many times we speak to young people and they're crying over a relationship that didn't work out and they didn't pay attention to the signs and we know they're going to be okay. They're going to have to go through their heartache. And then one day I think you grow up. Right. You just grow up for some people. It's 40, 50, 60, 70. And then you meet somebody and you're right. It's like a direct lightning hit. And that's what it sounds like. It was for the both of you. It seems like you both, I met him. I met him at that NACE event and he's lovely. And I know he's, I've seen his art over at the e-women's network. And I, I think it's what's wonderful is the both of you complement each other. Mm -hmm. And that's what it, life is about and relationships. And it doesn't matter what age you are. So would you give any advice to anybody? So people in their 50s, 60s, and 70s looking to find love, what advice would you share with them? Don't be afraid of it. You know, when, when it comes around, um, be open to it uh, and but know yourself and know what you're looking for um, know what what you learned from previous relationships and don't harbor ill will you know we go through whatever we go through because there's a lesson or that's plural lessons to be learned so um i'm a better person in this relationship because i learned from the previous relationship and don't hold grudges don't hold grudges oh gosh yes. learned um you know from from the previous and then you grew and you grew uh in a new direction so be be open to all that and communicate so uh, i have a question for you have you been to portugal with him no not yet what is going and when is it coming on your bucket list to go <laughs> Well, as, as soon as his immigration status will allow him to leave the country, he um, he's seeking um, to become a U.S. citizen. OK, so you have to get that. For the work permit and the green card. Uh, so but what we do want to do um, and we're getting a little bit nervous in um, August, his daughter is getting married up in Canada because uh, he raised his kids um uh, in Canada and uh she's getting married oh in, the, in one of the big cathedrals um just I, I saw a picture of it and I went oh my gosh uh, so we we hope to be able to go to to her lovely wedding um but again the immigration um let's say the process is um having a little bit of turbulence right now um so um and I'm going to step out and say something that Possibly I shouldn't, but those of us who are trying to come into the country legally and following all the rules um, are paying the price for the other situation. Um, absolutely. That, uh, absolutely. Yeah. So tell me if you go, are you going to play the organ in the cathedral? You know, I'm just going to sit. Uh, they don't know who I am. Okay. <laughs> they don't know that, that this is what I do. Um and uh, she's got her own team and, uh, you know, it'll just be wonderful. It will probably be one of the first times that I will be a guest at a wedding and not either running the show or playing, <laughs> uh, which is fine. I, it's, it'll be nice. <laughs> it is nice. It's nice to take a back seat. I mean, I'd like to go to a wedding and have somebody else do. For, you know, the ceremony, there's nothing wrong because you always, it's always like research. So I want to circle back because we, I'd like to be mindful of your time. So let's go back to a moment to your business. So how are you promoting your business? You know, we, how do you think you stand out? You know, with classical entertainment, right? From, from the beginning. And I, I, uh, I incorporated in 2003. So I'm <laughs> in my, 
in, in my 21st year. Um, and um, in the beginning, um, there weren't a lot of companies um, doing, doing uh, or specializing in the ceremonies. Most everybody was specializing in the reception and in the party. So basically, um, I just received uh, referrals and um, found myself on vendor lists of all these different properties. Um, and basically, I, I didn't I didn't do any marketing. Well, I take that back. I joined some of the uh, networking um, communities, um, uh, which I think, I don't know, because in those situations, you develop your relationships and the, the relationships are really key. And, you know, you said something that's so important. It is, it's all about building relationships and trust because they, they have to know, I, I want you to know, I have a, a redhead in the house and a salt and pepper. So I've got this golden retriever, <laughs> another oh, redhead, no and I have a little salt and pepper uh, dog that I just rescued. So, oh, you know, if you oh, hear okay. the noise, we, we all have lives, right? We all yeah. have family. That's my family that lives with me. My, my daughter and grandkids live on the other side of town. But, you know, it's important when you talk about uh, fostering relationships and, and it's I important because people want to know who you are. I mean, that they want to know and showing up to networking events really make a big difference, especially in the community that you're in. I know the community that I'm in. If you want to get your name out there, they want to see who you are and how you act, what your represent, representation is of yourself. And you always are a class act. I mean, that's something I have to say. You're always professional, you. but warm. And that's important. And that's one thing I always share when people say, how do you, you know, how do you increase your visibility and your network is when you show up, show up as who you are. Don't show up a hot mess, right? Isn't that right? <laughs> Don't over drink, don't overshare because people want to do business with people they like and know and trust, but they want us to be professional. Right. And there isn't any question about that. One thing I wanted to share with you, I loved what you did at the E-Woman Network event. We were doing something and you actually got up and you played again, just because um, they needed some filler music while we were doing something. And I think that's what you said. That's the whole purpose of using a company like yours. And for whether it's piano, whether it's guitar, whether it's harp, whatever it is that you provide, is that providing that 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 beautiful, like that that ambiance, that's the cherry on top of the Sunday for me. Any parting words, anything you want to say to the community out there about music, yourself, love, what would you like to end us with? You know, I would just like to express how much joy working the way I do, um, how, or working in this idiom, uh, working in, in Las Vegas, in special events, in destination weddings, in, in local weddings. It's just so fulfilling. It's just fun. I enjoy each and every client or each and every um, couple. It's just really fun. I like to get to know them. And then uh, through the music that we select for them, it all, it, it just, it's, I try to represent who they are, what they are, what they stand for. And it's just so much fun for me to get to do this. I love it. Whoops. Okay. I'm no, no, you're fine. You're fine. Okay. I just was making sure. Well, you heard it here from Cynthia and uh, everybody want to thank you so much for your time and anybody that's interested I'm going to put that information in the show notes and as I always say everybody continue to stay healthy happy and safe and spread love oh yes have that's a great day everyone